So I have finally moved to the big guns, a technological masterpiece. You could say it's the holy grail of cameras. I'm talking about the Sony a7S III. So those who have watched my channel before know that my previous camera body was the Sony a6400. I have since upgraded in order to you know, increase the production value of my client videos as well as my personal videos. So in today's video, I am going to go over whether the a7S III is a good option for you to buy in 2022. And if you're new around here, my name is Sam. I'm a photographer and videographer based right here in Rhode Island. So follow me on Instagram, subscribe to me on YouTube, and yeah, without any further ado, let's get into the video. Today, it's snowing. It's snowing pretty hard. And I wanted to see if I could get some footage of people surfing in the snow. I know it sounds crazy, but yep, people do that in Rhode Island. So it stopped snowing and went to another beach, filmed some more surfers at a pretty awesome sunset. And now we're gonna get some McDonald's fries. Take me back to Mexico, that can come sun, we turn the sun, we're high on me, want to hike with me. Okay, back from the snow, back from the cold, back from McDonald's. Let's talk about this camera. So I'm gonna break this down into a simple pros and cons list so that you can decide for yourself if this is the camera for you. And then afterwards, I'll provide my opinion on it. I know I just said I got this camera, but my business partner, Nick, also has a Sony a7S III. So I've had the opportunity to use this camera for over a year on client jobs, personal projects, all things like that. So I have enough usage out of it to make a verdict. All right, let's start with the pros of this camera and spoiler alert, there are a lot. <laughs> First and foremost, this camera is capable of shooting very high resolution and very high frame rates. Soon 4K will be the standard for video. It will take over 1080p and this camera can shoot 4K up to 120 frames per second. Although I don't really find myself using it that much because 120 frames per second is pretty dang slow and it takes up a lot of space. So I end up diverting to 4K 60 for slow-mo and then doing 4K 24 for my A-roll. And also if I wanted, it has the option to do 240 frames per second in 1080p. Not something I would use very often at all, but say I'm doing a product shoot, it might help. The second pro is the colors out of this camera. Now I know Canon is known as the king of colors, but I really think the colors out of the Sony a7S III are really nice. Plus it helps having the 10-bit 422 in S-Log, so I can really push and pull colors to where I want them in post. Even with just a simple S-Log 3 correction let, the footage out of this camera looks absolutely stunning in terms of color. Next is the low light performance, and the low light in this camera is second to none. This camera has something called a dual native ISO, at both, I believe, 640 and 12,800. And what native ISO means, basically it's the ISO in the camera that performs the best and produces the best image. So say you're at ISO 10,000, that is typically a very grainy shot. But in this camera, when you bump it up to that next level of 12,800, the image will clean right up and it will look very nice once again. This is huge in run and gun situations with not a lot of available light. I specifically find myself using this at weddings a lot when they have dark reception venues with just some dingy tungsten lights or something like that. Usually you just don't have enough light to produce a clean image with other cameras, but when I bump this one up to 12,800, the image looks super nice even in those dark and dingy venues. And Sony already has some pretty great low light performance, but this is just next level. Let's talk about autofocus. I don't think it's anything groundbreaking, but it's super fast and super reliable. The touch to focus option on the screen also works very well. So that's really all I can ask for out of autofocus in a camera. 
This camera is also full frame, which is very valuable in certain situations. My theory is that you can always go tighter in focal length, but once you reach a certain point, you can only go so wide. So specifically when I'm using this camera in something like real estate, I can really get the widest view possible for those establishing shots. Whereas on my Sony a6400, that was an APS-C sensor, meaning it had a crop factor of about 1.6. So the full visible frame, say at 16 millimeters, on a full frame sensor was cropped in on that other camera. So it wasn't really the best for real estate. This one, however, changes that. Another perk about full frame cameras is that since the sensor is larger, you can get more light in it, and it also produces a better depth of field. So an F2.8 on a full frame camera might have a nicer, blurrier background than an F2.8 on an APS-C or Micro Four Thirds camera. If you wanna know a little bit more about crop factors of cameras and types of sensors, uh, Nick made a video a little while back that we'll put in the top right corner of the screen. You can go check it out. He talks about full frame versus APS-C versus micro four thirds. Next is battery life. And from my experience, the battery life on this camera is pretty dang good. I've been able to do entire weddings on only like one or two batteries per camera, which is pretty impressive in my opinion, especially for something that is shooting such high resolution and such high frame rates like 4K60. And sure, some other camera brands and models might have better battery life than this, but this is just really a huge step up from what I had with my 6400. I would find that a lot of the times on maybe like four or five, six hour shoots, I was going through three batteries on my 6400. And after that, I didn't have any batteries left. So if I went through all three of those batteries, I couldn't shoot anything. Now I know that three batteries for this camera will get me through an entire day's worth of shooting no matter what. One thing I love about Sony cameras is that you pretty much have infinite customization to fit your workflow, and this camera is no different. This camera has three dedicated custom buttons, a function button where you can have a little mini menu. You can also customize a My menu within the menu settings. And there are also other buttons on the cameras that you can change the functions to. For me, this really helps speed everything up when I'm on a shoot. I can just click a button and change my white balance really quick or click another button and set my audio levels, things like that. This camera is ergonomically friendly, meaning it is really well built, fits nice in my hand, and has a nice size and weight. It isn't overly heavy and large like some cinema cameras per se, but it also feels very solid and it's built very nicely. I also like how the grip feels in my hands. I feel like it has a really nice mold to it compared to my A6400, which is just a really shallow grip and I felt like it was gonna slip out of my hands. This one, not gonna have any problems with that. Also part of ergonomics are the camera strap connectors on the camera. On previous cameras like this A6400, you can hear they're pretty rattly, which sometimes would pick up in the audio. However, on the A7S III, Sony made them stiff so that they're not gonna rattle around or move around. They pretty much just stay kind of locked onto the camera and don't really do any moving. The doors for the audio jack, the HDMI cable, and the SD card slots are also very nice and well-built. They don't feel like they're gonna break off at all. Probably my favorite physical feature on the camera, in fact, is the flip out screen. I can finally see myself when filming. Prior to this, I had this flip up screen on the A6400, which in theory, it could work. But the problem was if you put a microphone on top of the camera, that would be blocking the screen and you couldn't really see yourself anyway. Now I can put a microphone on top of the camera and see myself in the flip out screen on the side. Now let's talk about cons. There aren't many cons on this camera, but I guess I'll be nitpicky and pick a few. So when using Nick's A7S III, I noticed that his flip out screen started to become a little loose after a while. I don't have any issues with mine as of yet, but if that happens over time, I will be a little bit disappointed in that, especially because this is an expensive camera. It's $3,500 retail, and I actually bought this one for $4,000 because it's been back ordered everywhere. I'm also not really crazy about the exposure compensation dial on the top. I wish Sony used it for something else. Maybe it could just be another custom dial for white balance. I haven't really dove into the menu enough to see if I'm able to change the function of that dial. It just seems like kind of a useless wheel in my opinion. And finally, probably the biggest con of this camera, if you can call it a con, is the 12 megapixel photos. Now I know this camera is primarily video focused, so the 12 megapixels helps 
with low light performance in that sense. But if I were to take a photo with this camera, which I have taken a few already, cropping in would be a little bit difficult to get a clean image. My a6400 had a 24 megapixel sensor and I was able to crop in fairly substantially on a lot of my photos. And I mentioned I have taken photos with this camera already and they've came out incredible. I haven't really noticed any issues with the megapixel count to the naked eye. As long as I'm not cropping in too, too much, I should be good taking photos with this camera as well as video. All right, so you have heard all the pros and cons that I could think of with this camera, but the bottom line is, this camera is definitely still a great option in 2022, and I would highly recommend it to any video shooters or hybrid shooters for that matter. However, a few years ago when this was released, it was probably hands down the best video camera on the market. Now, other brands seem to be catching up a little bit, which is good in the long run. More competition means better products for us consumers. Even Sony has since put out the a7 IV, which has some of the same specs as this camera and even performs better arguably in the photo department. And if you shoot with a different camera brand than Sony, I would highly recommend looking into what your brand offers because all of these companies are making huge strides. Canon, Panasonic, Fujifilm, Nikon. Yes, Nikon. They are all making great technological strides in the video department. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you think the Sony a7S III is still a great camera in 2022? Or are there better options out there for the price point? let me know down in the comment section below. Also, make sure you like this video if you found it helpful or enjoyed, and subscribe if you wanna see more content from me. That all said and done, I'm gonna go finish my shamrock shake and french fries. See you guys in the next video, peace.